uh, I hope everybody, you know, just looked over the data and, and read my, my notes. The conclusion was that the optimum disparity was uh, above 2.5 plus. Um, so this one says 2.1 plus, but if we look at if we look at the actual numbers, I mean there is no 2.1. It's, it's it starts at 2.5. So that's why um, this conclusion doesn't say 2.1. It says 2.5. 82 percent is really significant, don't you think? Absolutely. Right. Well, we'll keep watching that. I mean, you know, that's that's the goal I put out that some people think is too high, some people think is too low. So well, let's say this would hold. You just keep a strategy and, right. and only well, wage when that happens. But we'll have to see. Right. Well, the problem with that is, is as Alexis has pointed out here, is that this is a small sample of the total number of events. Right. In other words, you're only going to get like two of these events per month, I think, is what it comes out to, right? Right, right. You know, if, if we did follow a, you know, only bet if you have 2.5, then we basically eliminate 75% of our predictions because it's not really that um, common to get a 2.5 disparity. Right. No, I think the most significant thing of this is it points out that we are having success both with the viewing and with the judging because both of those things have to click in order to get any result like this. Okay. The fact that you're getting such a high hit rate when the, the sessions are so different, one of them is right on and one of them is way off is what this tells you. That means both the viewing and the judging are really, really good. Right. I think this is just amazing. Really really great and look over time the viewers and judges are going to get better so we hopefully will have a higher and higher um, number of these as time goes yeah. on so I'm gonna move on um, the next thing I looked at was uh, is there really a correlation between the lowest score within a trial and whether or not that related to its hit rate it does look like that um, the lower your CR score is for one of the sides, the more accurate your prediction is. Another way to say this is that if one of your sides fail really bad, <laughs> then you're probably going to get the prediction right. Um, the way I'm looking at it is we don't know what's right, but we know what's wrong. And if we know what's wrong, then we know that the other side is right. There should I, also I, be I, a correlation to the wild card then also. So yes. if you have a low score, then, then all of a sudden the uh, the correlation with the wild card has may you know it would be interesting to get that data too. Oh right, right. I, I, didn't, agree, I just totally forgot about the wild card. Okay. It makes the wild card really important. Well, I'm going to move forward. Um, just real quick summary here. What I think I hear you saying is that. If the low CR is low, who cares what the the data says for the higher one? Well, if the higher I, I CR doesn't case, matter. You can sort of say it like that, yes. Let's see. So I did the same thing with the the higher scores. When I, I didn't find any a relationship. Yeah, I tried to combine the scores to see if there was any relationship. When I, I didn't find any, so I just ignored it. Um, Why didn't you find one with the high one? one uh, you went through that real fast. or That looks like there's a correlation. Why do you say there's no correlation? Those look, those, those right. I mean, that's um, correlated. It's not flat. Yeah, but again, those data points on there, some of them are really low bins and some of them are high bins. Yeah. yeah. See, the, the first one and the last one are only seven events total. Right. right. That, that was the, the, the main reason why. Relevant. Well, that's why everything here, as he's saying, is tentative, but there is a trend tentatively. Well, the main thing to right. look at is there are two bins in the middle. They're exactly the same. Well, right. what, what two bins are we Those looking at? Oh, looking this at part right here. Oh, right, right. 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 So it's the, last, it's the last bin that is deciding everything. Right. And, and that doesn't right. really... Yes, but that's only 10 events, right? I mean, right, yeah. right. But it, it's still... It's still data, yeah, and sure. and even yeah. though, um, like if if you look at this one, the 
the trend line right here you know, really really sucks. I mean, it doesn't really <laughs> it doesn't really follow it. And so you know, eventually, as we get more data, then you know, we'll we'll get a better um, model. So what can we do with all this data? You know, this equation right here is 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 a model of of the data that was obtained. And so what I actually did was I tried to use it. And let's see, this was two weeks ago or two or three weeks. I, I don't remember, but this was an actual uh, um, A or B prediction. And um, well, one of the things that I try to do is uh, I try to use this equation. Uh, let's take one of these things right here. So I took this equation right here. And um, so this, this data right here represents um, the disparity. And if we take a look at this, we can basically just calculate the disparity. Ignore that. And we're only looking at the the base CR score. So over here, the disparity is um, 4.5 4 uh, minus you know, 3. And then we have this equation right here. And if we plug this into that, we should get a, a probability. And that probability would represent whether or not this is going to be you know, a hit or a miss. So we're only looking at this thing right here. So um, I calculated the disparity over here already. And I took, where, where did I get this equation from? I took that from um, over here. And then um, I just plugged it in. And now I have these uh, hit rate probabilities. Um, so so what, what, it's, what it's saying is that based on um, the actual session, we can actually guess or, or estimate well, what, what the probability is going to be, whether or not this is going to be a hit or a miss. And if we look at this, you know, it's not, it's not that great. So, okay, so it's probably going to be a miss. Um, or we can take it, we can, we can do it for the other ones too, and we'll take this equation and do the exact same thing and figure out another probability. So, um, and that one was based on, uh, what is this thing? So this one right here was based on the lowest CR, uh, CR score. And so, you know, we can easily calculate that. Look over here. And the lowest CR score that's uh, possible is uh, for the top one. For this guy right here, we're looking only at the, the minimum. So the lowest CR is is it 4.16? So it's 2.73, and then we go over here, and um, basically these are the lowest score in their sessions. And then we take that, put it into the equation. Where did I get this equation from? And um, you know, I got it from this thing right here. This equation right here is the same thing as uh, this equation, and so now we have a second probability. You know, well, this one's kind of better, but um, again, the the lines, the lines themselves, you know, they this one's actually a pretty good um, mm -hmm. indicator, but. But then we we do this, the exact same thing for this one right here, and let's see. And you guys kind of get the idea that we now have probabilities for um, these sessions and these individuals. And if we remember uh, from the reliability. Uh, exercise that we did, you know, and these right here, these are just made up. These these are made up reliabilities, but 
you know, we can actually get um, use the real ones. But so now we have hit rates and we have reliability indicators. And you know, we those those aren't those those are just indicators. These are just like um, I guess tools that you can use. In, in 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 making a decision of whether or not you want to um, bet or not, and so you know we, we take a look at all this data. Oh, Malcolm is um, thirty six percent that based on the disparity that he's going to you know it's going to be a hit. Um, so Alexis, does this change with every prediction? Yes, it would change with every prediction because all these values would also change. Okay, and then it really, um, it's good for the viewer to have this data for their own personal growth, but it seems like the judge would be the one that could benefit the most by looking at that because the judge would then say, oh, well, so-and-so does really has a great reliability ranking, and so we'll, we'll make sure that we pay attention to that one. And so and so other person is a beginner and their reliability isn't so high so we won't we won't pay quite as much attention to that one. In fact right. we've already done that's that right. mathematically that's what this group score is in the lower right if I'm not I mistaken. Is that yes. correct? Fantastic. Right, right. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and Nancy I believe you're absolutely right. What we're seeing here is a detailed example really from the judge's perspective who's sitting here and should I go over or under? Okay, yes. most of these were sports bets. Should I go up or down? Should I go over or under? And each judge um, will probably make different judgments about the data, but what a wonderful approach. Right. Alexis, this is great. And, and so, um, you know, I, I want to I sidetrack right now, you know, with, with, all, this, um, with all these numbers. Um, I want, I want to tell a story about it. poker, you know. Um, <laughs> I used to think that poker was a game of luck. You know, you, you, you got to be lucky to, to be good at poker. And um, it's all luck. You know, there's no skill involved. And so that, that's what I used to think until I went to college and, you know, I met my roommates. And um, they, they, they taught me how to, uh, how to play poker. And the reason why I knew they were... It, it it had to be a skill is because I was washing so much dishes, I was uh, <laughs> vacuuming the house or the the, the apartment, because we would play we would we would bet we would play poker for for who's gonna wash the dishes, so <laughs> so there's three of us and we're we're all playing poker and I would always lose you know so I always I was always the one cooking I was always the one washing the dishes I was always the one vacuuming and. <laughs> So it had to be a game of skill, and and so um, eventually, you know, as as I I live with these guys, they they taught me how to play, and I you know became pretty good at poker. And my perspective on poker um, was what well, wasn't so much that it was based on luck, you know, there there was actual skill involved, and um, once you get good at the poker, skill. The skill really is in paying attention to the data. You gotta count the cards and pay attention to what's been played. <laughs> that's that's true, but you know, you, it, it's all about a numbers game. I um, mean, if you know the probabilities, if you know the um, the the chances of you know getting a hit or the chances of getting a um, a straight, um, it's all about knowing when to knowing how to bet. And how much to bet, mm -hmm. and and that that's that, that's basically you know how to win poker. If you know if you know when to bet, and if you know how much to bet, then you're you're gonna do good in in poker. And so I'm um, I'm gonna tie it back into um, to to all this data right here, and and when you when you get to play poker, you 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 learn um, different betting strategies. You learn how to um, manage your money. So eventually, you know, we can we can we can do something like this, or um, 
let, let, let's take an example. If our if our current bankroll is a thousand dollars in poker, um, you're 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 recommended to ne never bet more than two percent of your your current bankroll. So this is what what I kind of did right here. And in poker, when you have a premium hand, and I represent that, it well, if there's a hundred percent hit rate, or well, we're gonna do our maximum wager. And if there's a ninety percent hit rate, uh, we'll only wager eighteen dollars based on this current bankroll. Now, if our bankroll was you know two thousand, you know, all, all the values change. But um, it, it's sort of like a guideline on on how to bet. So when we look at all this data right here, and you know we're trying to decide whether or not we want to um, to bet on that uh, that stock or that that option, or how many options should we buy, you know we can look at this data and we can make a, an educated guess, um, just knowing the the numbers and uh, of course right now all these uh, all these models all these equations don't really line up but you know as we as we collect more data these ones will um, be more accurate and yeah that's I guess that's, that's pretty much it uh, I don't really have anything else anybody has questions